There are three interrelated premises that make up the Green Impact Zone model for community revitalization. The first is doing things of scale, large enough and visible enough to change the market. The second is people and place. That it's not only that we improve the physical fabric of our community, but that we also help to empower the people who are living in those communities. And the third is both sides of the equation, which simply says that both the people in the communities as well as the people who control resources need to be informed, educated, on board with community revitalization. The urban core of Kansas City, Missouri, like many large cities across the nation, has areas that have seen decades of disinvestment resulting in high rates of poverty, unemployment, crime, and high concentrations of vacant and abandoned properties. In Kansas City, neighborhoods east of Troost Avenue, historically a geographic, cultural, and economic dividing line, were particularly hard hit by the decline. Over the years, many people and organizations tried a variety of interventions to address these compounding social and economic issues without sustainable success. In 2009, Congressman Emanuel Cleaver II launched a new initiative called the Green Impact Zone. When I realized that we had almost $800 billion approved uh, for projects such as this, I did something that no other Congress member is doing. I got involved by creating a, a project that is now called the Green Impact Zone. He proposed a model of place-based investment that targeted funds in one area for greater impact and asked the Mid-America Regional Council, commonly known as MARC, to provide administration and oversight. The Mid-America Regional Council, which is the association of all the local governments in metropolitan Kansas City, is helping to administer this process. We're helping to bring new federal resources into the zone. We're helping connect to other regional partners and resources. And most importantly, we have a team that's in the community working alongside neighborhood leaders and residents and helping to put these investments into practice in the Green Impact Zone. So we are an administrative vehicle and a point of, of leadership and support to help this happen. The Green Impact Zone, its staff, its partners, and most importantly, its neighborhood leaders and residents undertook a long-term strategy to revitalize the community. They created a game plan which included vision and guiding principles that would be used in the transformation of the 150 square block area designated as the Green Impact Zone. The strongest outcome that we could possibly realize is that we have helped to build capacity within the neighborhoods that leads to sustainability. And by that I mean that the people have the information, they have the education, they have the resources, the assistance that they embrace, that they internalize and are able then to use on whatever their respective issues might be. The vision created by the neighborhood leaders and partners is to develop a sustainable community, one that is environmentally, economically, and socially stronger tomorrow than it is today. Using a comprehensive green strategy, coordinated programs with innovative delivery mechanisms, and intense resident engagement to more rapidly push community change, build community capacity, and make the Green Impact Zone a place where people want to live, work, and play. The City of Kansas City, Missouri invested $4.2 million in the Green Impact Zone over a four-year period. This investment allowed Mark to hire a professional staff consisting of a team of neighborhood development strategists who were responsible for facilitating the transformation of the five neighborhoods in the zone. What do we want in the future? Think, don't put limits on what do you want to see Blue Hills become in the future? No more empty homes. Okay, so. Okay. Full ownership. The city's investment leveraged another $166 million in grant funding that has impacted not only the Green Impact Zone, but communities across the Kansas City metropolitan area.
Initially, Zone neighborhood leaders and partners identified eight key strategies and focus areas that were important to them. Two years later, after achieving tangible results in many of those areas, Zone staff asked the neighborhood leaders to evaluate the progress and reprioritize the focus areas. While all eight were still important, the neighborhood leaders decided that three of them were of greater priority because they represented areas where the greatest revitalization impact was occurring and could continue to occur. The zone staff did not abandon the five remaining strategies, but continues to address them through coordinated outreach programming while focusing more intently on the top three areas identified by the neighborhood leaders. The Green Impact Zone strategy is built on three fundamental interrelated premises, scale, people in place, and balancing both sides of the equation. It is imperative to work at a scale that is large enough to bring about significant change in the community, but targeted to specific projects that can serve as catalysts for further progress. There are several key catalytic success stories in the Green Impact Zone. The Bancroft School is a historic school that has been renovated into 50 affordable apartments and townhomes, along with community amenities. The Green Impact Zone was influential in working with the neighborhood to identify areas of redevelopment and present the project to potential investors. Uh, this is a former Bancroft Elementary School that's being turned into uh, 50 units of multifamily housing, uh, lead platinum construction, a community garden and, and, and community space inside to, to just breathe, breathe life back into a neighborhood uh, that needed a, needed a hand up uh, to get back on track. And, and we're so very excited to be uh, one of the very first projects in the Green Impact Zone and, and see this thing come to fruition. Bancroft School is going to live again and it's going to be a lead sustainable asset to this community. The Blue Hills Community Services Center, located at 5008 Prospect, includes a contractor incubator and community meeting facility. The Green Impact Zone was instrumental in working with partners to secure funding that enabled the project to move forward. Blue Hills Community Services acquired this site with high hopes of urban reinvestment. The Blue Hills Business Center and Contractor Incubator became a reality. A multi-tenant facility providing training and business development for small business construction contractors event, meeting, and training space for our community partners, and new business offices for our programs and services. They're developing relationships and projects that link the community to our view of the future. And therefore, we are going to be partners. We look forward to working with them, taking classes here, developing and growing, and seeing what can happen to the rest of Prospect, because we know that their eye is on the mark. Thank you. <laughs> the Ivanhoe Neighborhood Redevelopment Plan will serve as a gateway into the community. The zone utilized its resources to secure a housing developer that was instrumental in moving the project forward. In connection with the Green Impact Zone, we were very, very pleased through a competitive process that the consultant that worked with us to develop our model block plan was the consultant that the Green Impact Zone uh, hired to help us, um, and when I say us, I mean all of the neighborhoods within the Green Impact Zone with our development initiatives. The Tiger Grant, transportation and infrastructure generating economic recovery resulted in more than $25 million in upgrades to sidewalks and curbs as well as resurfacing streets in the zone. The zone was the subject of the Tiger Grant. They have put in a walking trail along Cleaver Boulevard that I think is gorgeous. And then of course there are sidewalks on the other side of the walkway. And this summer, it'll be a great place to walk. New curbings, it's just great, it really is. I live about two blocks from the, the path uh, that they're just opening and I plan to use it. I can probably walk from my house to the plaza and it's, it's a very good thing. KCPNL chose the Green Impact Zone to implement its smart grid. This project brought cutting edge energy technology to the Green Impact Zone. We also have a contract with KCPNL to install smart thermostats in selected homes within the Green Impact Zone. We are vested in this community 
And so part of our hiring effort is hiring people within this community. So we work very closely with the Full Employment Council. Uh, we hire people from the Full Employment Council from our area, from along the corridor, and from the neighborhoods that surround our business. Sufficient scale matters. The work required to turn substandard areas into places of hope and opportunity requires adequate resources and focused attention. Collectively, the Green Impact Zone and its partners have lit the fire of hope. The Catalyst projects have made significant improvements to the community that could continue for many years. Successful community redevelopment requires addressing the multiple dimensions of this investment simultaneously. Investment in the physical fabric of the community will not bring about positive change unless we also invest in the human fabric of the community. When I think about employment and training in the Green Impact Zone, I had a conversation with a graduate of our Essential Employability Skills component today. He told me he is now making $41 an hour and he has uh, access to a 401k and he's going to connect with a financial planner. That's employment and training in the Green Impact Zone to me. The EES, Essential Employabilities class, takes place once a quarter. This is our eighth session. And in each group, words of wisdom come out. It's like a self-discovery process. I learned so much this week. I grew as a man, I grew as an employee, and uh, I grew as a father. I feel that uh, this, this has been really good for all of us. They've taught us much more than I ever expected. I thought it was just for getting a job, and it's not. It's for an entire lifestyle. It's for an entire changing, it's, it's a transformation. Thank everybody for having faith in a lot of people right here that a lot of people didn't have faith in. So. People matter and place matters. When we think about true sustainability, it has to include development of our youth. Throughout the past seven weeks, our Nexus students have endured a rigorous curriculum. Nexus has taught me that I have the power to change my community however I want. What the Nexus group has taught me this summer was how to be a better leader and take more actions for my responsibilities. Nexus has helped me change my attitude and the way I treat others. This is your Nexus Summer Youth Program. With 1,000 vacant lots and another 600 vacant structures, the urgent need for redevelopment demanded strategic speed. The housing stock of the Green Impact Zone is much older, turn of the 20th century. Our job was to facilitate residents being able to access resources that allowed them to renovate their homes or provide tours so they could see the resources that were out there for them to get home loans, to purchase new homes. So the whole focus was providing a platform where housing stock could be improved and where residents would have access to healthy housing. I got so much information um, about housing, um, purchasing a home, because you know I hear everything and I'm ready to purchase a home. Successful redevelopment requires building the capacity of the community to address the issues facing their neighborhoods and connecting this new capacity with the resources and expertise of those who oversee the distribution of the resources. Community development not only requires patient capital, but patient support and patient partnership. It is necessary to provide long-term support backed by measurable outcomes and continuous achievements. We've been working with the Green Impact Zone and the Urban Neighborhood Initiative and business and property owners along Truce Avenue to do a community improvement district along Truce. And what would happen is the, biz the property owners would decide to pay more into a fund in order that they can get a higher level of service for things that would make the area more attractive. We could attract more businesses and we could attract more uh, uh, customers for those businesses. A strong neighborhood outreach program requires a wide array of tactics to inform, educate, and move residents and businesses to act. The Green Impact Zone uses boots on the ground, an in-depth knowledge of programs and resources available to residents and businesses, and support to help make effective use of them. 
weatherization program, um, the optimizer program, the smart grid, thermostat program, all of those things are available to us and we need to take advantage of. The Green Impact Zone defines and implements outreach and engagement as two separate terms and methodologies. Outreach is our mechanism for delivering value-added material to neighborhood residents. Outreach paves the way for engagement. Engagement is a means to collaboratively address community concerns using focused, ongoing two-way conversations to develop understanding. Engagement encourages open dialogue and an exchange of information. We as citizens have got to step up and be willing to have a relationship with our police department. We listen to our five neighborhoods and we strategize with this big issue of public safety. How in the world do we impact that? What we determined was we've got to get the people and the folk who work every day on public safety connected. It's a wonderful experience and it connects you to the people that are there to protect us and help us. So take the course. It's very, very informative. The Green Impact Zone for delivering programming and services is built on these fundamental interrelated premises. This approach requires building the capacity and leadership of neighborhood organizations. The impact uh, that the zone has had on the community or their area, as I see, a great benefit to them is bringing the community leaders or neighborhood leaders together. Developing the leadership, trust, and commitment of residents to work for change over a number of years. We're all agents of change. And that change only happens when people take action. And that's why we're here, because we want to see change in our neighborhoods, in our cities, and as most of all importantly, our communities. Developing partnerships with outside resources and expertise, and helping people understand their connection to the community and how they benefit when the community redevelops. We are vested in the corridor. We're here to stay. And so whatever we can do to help the corridor be a better and safer place, that's what we're going to do. Developing a community vision with residents and neighborhood leadership and finding ways to fulfill that vision. We've learned the number one thing to do in trying to do any type of community organizing is you have to be trained. Integrating programming so that one project reinforces another. I live in the Green Impact Zone and I do appreciate them uh, being able to bring this program to our area. Setting and measuring benchmarks to make sure that all aspects of the community are progressing. This project will not only rehab neighborhoods, it will create jobs. Transforming long neglected neighborhoods into places of hope and opportunity requires adequate resources and focused attention. We've learned there must be a change in how funding for community transformation is viewed. Time, talent, and money that uplift entire neighborhoods are investments, not handouts, and they bring a real return on investment through the restoration of public safety, public health, and public education, the building blocks of capable, vibrant community. So far, this has been such an interesting and important journey. There have been quite a few what we call fires lit in the Green Impact Zone, things that are happening in all of our communities. And our neighborhoods and our neighborhood associations are definitely the heroes in this situation. We feel so fortunate that we've had the opportunity to work with them. When people's hope factor is raised, that leads then to possibility thinking. And it's the possibility thinking that leads to action. It leads to change. It leads to positive improvement. So we are just so grateful for this opportunity. We know that the sky is not the limit. The universe is the limit for people who live in the green impact zone. We hope everybody will continue with us on this journey. If one voice can make a change, you can imagine what everybody can do together. This is community.